It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Today for Comparative Mythology, we're going to contextualize the story for the Tower of Babel. Now my main primary sources for this video includes the Holy Bible, Myths from Mesopotamia, as well as Metamorphosis. So buckle up guys because this video is just going to be very interesting. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11 verse 1 through 9. It says right here that the whole world have one language and a common speech. As people move eastward, they find a plain and Sinar and settle there. They said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we may be scattered all over the face of the entire world. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, as if one people speaking the same language had begun to do this, then nothing they planned to do would be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that we not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there all over the earth and started building a city. That's why it was called Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them all over the face of the whole world. So the question then becomes, is the Tower of Babel story as presented in Genesis based upon a true place? Is there other mythology that are based upon this story or mythologies that existed prior to this story? The historical Tower of Babel is known as the Itiminaki, and the Itiminaki refers to a house of the foundation of heaven on earth. And this image right here is exactly what it looks like right now. Now, according to the historical data, we do know that these type of temple towers was actually the oriental equivalent of the Egyptian pyramid and probably just as old, that the building of these pyramids came to end roughly around 1640 BCE, and that they play a humongous part in many cities in ancient Mesopotamia, and that archaeologists have discovered at least 19 of these buildings in 16 cities, that the existence of them are known from literary sources for 10 of them. Now, there are many different rooms that are dedicated to different gods within the Itiminaki. It's actually dedicated to the god Murdoch for one room and his wife. The second room is actually in commendation on Namu. And there's also rooms dedicated to the water god, the god of light, and the god of heaven. And finally, Alel, which is Murdoch's predecessor as the chief of the Mesopotamian pantheon. Now, the seventh room is also called the House of Bed. It contains a bed and a throne. And the second bed was on this interconnection of the temple on the highest platform of the Itiminaki. And this right here is an image of the god Murdoch. You guys are probably thinking to yourself, well, geez, Tyler, where can I find more information about this god Murdoch? Murdoch makes an appearance in the story called the Aluma Elish. Murdoch, give counsel. Listen to your father. You are my son who gives me pleasure. Speak, take your stand, appease them with your glaze. Be, I rejoin at his father's word. He drew near and stood in the pleasant of Ansar. Ansar saw him, his heart full of satisfaction. He kissed his lips and removed his fear. My father, do not hold your peace, but speak forth. I will go and fulfill your desires. Ansar, do not hold your peace, but speak forth. I will go and fulfill your desires. Which man drawn up his battle away against you? And I will, Tiamat, is who is a woman, will attack you with her weapons. My father, begetter, rejoin and be glad. Soon you'll be trained on the neck of Tiamat. Asar, begetter, rejoice and be glad. Soon you'll be trained on the neck of Tiamat. Go, my son. Conversate with all knowledge, appease Tiamat with your pure spell, appease Tiamat with your pure spell, drive the storm chariot without delay, and which cannot be repelled, turn her back. Tiamat, the surge of the gods your son has come forth, he has determined to meet Tiamat, he has spoken to me and said, Quickly now, decree your destiny for him without delay, that you may go and face your powerful enemy. Kaka went. He directed his steps. Lamu and Laomu, the gods of his fathers, 
He prostituted himself, kissed the ground before them. He got up, saying to them, and stood. When Laha and Lalamu heard, they cried out loud. All the yee 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 moan in distress. What has gone wrong? She took this decision about us. We did not know what Tiamat was doing. All the great gods who decreed destinies gathered as they want. They entered the princess of Ansar and became full of joy. They kissed as another as they were in the assembly. They conferred as they sat at the table. They ate grain. They drank ale. They squatted at the sweet liquor through their straws as they drank beer and felt good. They became quite carefree, their mood was merry, and they decreed their fate for Murdoch their Avenger. The book of Genesis was written down roughly 1400 BCE, but there's actually a story that predates the story for the Tower of Babel. Now the story that most likely inspired the book of Genesis for the Tower of Babel is actually a story that is called and Maracar and the Lord of Arata, and it's written down around 2100 BCE. On that day, when there was no snake, when there was no scorpion, when there was no hydra, when there was no lion, where there was neither dog nor wolf, there was thus neither fear nor trembling, man has no rival. The many tongue and summer, the great mountain of me, and magnificence and a cod, the land possessing that is befitting, and the Martu land, resting in security, the whole universe, the well-guarded people, may all address Ali together in a single language. Another story that is very similar to the Tower of Babel actually comes directly from Metamorphosis. Now, Metamorphosis was actually written down in Latin around 8 AD, but we do know that the idea of the story that was presented in Metamorphosis was actually quite common in the Greek religion that even predates that. Wondering the heights of heaven no safer than the earth, they say the giants attempted to take the celestial kingdom, piling mountains up to the distant stars. Then the all-powerful father, the gods, hurled his bolt of lightning, fractured Olympus, and strewed Mount Pelion down Asada below. Her son's dreadful bodies, buried by that mass, drenched earth with steams of blood, and they say she warned it to a new life so that a trace of her children might remain transforming it into the shape of human beings. So what exactly did we learn from this video? We learned that the Tower of Babel is a real place, but it's not dedicated to the worship of the god Yahweh. It's actually dedicated to the god Murdoch, and Murdoch can be seen in the Illuma Elish. We also learned that the story for the Tower of Babel was based upon a previous story that predates it, we also learned that stories like Metamorphosis also talk about a similar thing. But what do you guys think about this? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.